The last time we sat down, uh, Sarah, was uh, before the opening of your Oscar nominated uh, Away From Her. Um, now you're back at TIFF with Take This Waltz. Um, and it's really nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Hello. So tell me a bit about the title. I'm curious about the title. It's from a Leonard Cohen song. Um, does it have any particular meaning for you? Is this a particular favorite song of yours? Or? It, it is. It's, it's one of my favorite songs. And I, I was listening to it nonstop while I was thinking about the film and visualizing the film. Um, and I love the idea of making a film about, about those specific moments that we have with people in long-term relationships and moving from one partner to, a, to the next. So it, for me, it really, it's so complex. I'm not sure I, I, to this day that I really understand the lyrics completely, but it sort of puts me in a place that I wanted the film to sort of capture. So you're saying that you actually wrote your, your screenplay to Leonard Cohen? Yeah, there, there, were, there were a few songs I was listening to a lot um, that was the main one. I also listened to a lot of um, Karina Rose, which is an amazing uh, new uh, band out of Montreal, um, and a lot of Jason Collette. How would you describe um, Take This Waltz? Do you just, do, do, are, you, does, are you comfortable with a romantic comedy, or is that too narrow? I don't think it's quite a romantic comedy, because I think at its heart it is a drama, and it, it, it comes to a quite a serious place. But I definitely wanted to have a playfulness to it and a joyfulness to it. And a, I wanted to really capture that moment in a relationship where you're falling into desire and how vivid that makes the world and how alive and colorful that makes the world. So it has a lot of moments of levity and of joy in it, but I think at its heart it's, it's a romantic drama. And not a comedy. I don't think so, although it's definitely got moments of comedy in it. And you hire one of the biggest comedy stars right mm -hmm. now, <laughs> which brings you to the question of the cast. Of course, uh -huh. it goes Seth, R Seth Rogen, who is you know regarded for his more gross-out comedies. Yeah, I've um, always been like a huge fan of Seth's, and and as a fan of his, I've always wanted to see him do a dramatic role. Um, I think he has a kind of depth that it comes across in movies like Knocked Up and and funny people, even though that's not the focus of his characters. Um, so actually, Seth was the first person I knew I wanted to cast in the film while I was writing it. Michelle Williams, Oscar nominated. Yeah. It was Blue Valentine, wasn't it, with mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Gosling, I believe. Mm -hmm. that yeah. And how did that come about? Um, Michelle is, I think, one of the best actors alive right now. Um, there's nothing she can't do. Um, as well as having like this amazing sort of profound quality to her that comes across in all of her work. When I met with her about this, I, I just found she, she has a sort of sense of humor about herself and an ability to be self-deprecating self and to be embarrassed and um, to be really funny. And, 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 and those were qualities that this character, I think, needed and um, that I had never seen her play before. So um, for me, there was... You know, after I'd met Michelle, there was really no one else who could have played this part. And did you cast her actually before Blue Valentine, or was it... Uh... No, it was uh, it was just in the months preceding shooting. And Luke Kirby? Luke Kirby's, you know, someone I've known for years, who I acted with many years ago, and um, and is a friend, and, and not someone who I initially saw in this role. And my brother, John Buchan, who's um, the casting director that I work with, um, really saw him in this role from the very beginning. And... I wasn't as sure, even though Luke is one of my favorite working actors right now, I, I didn't quite see him in this part. And then when I met with him about it, it became really clear to me that there was nobody else who could who could breathe this character into life in the same way. And the other one, of course, is Sarah Silverman. Sarah, um, I am such a huge fan of her show, of the Sarah Silverman program, and I've probably seen every episode two or three times. So both Johnny, my uh, my brother, and I are huge fans of hers. And, and it was Johnny sort of woke up in the middle of the night one night and went, oh, my God, Sarah Silverman has to play Geraldine. And so it was kind of a lark because we thought for sure she wouldn't do this part of this film. Um, and we were just kind of stunned, A, that we got to meet her because we're such huge fans. And then the fact that she wanted to, to do this part was so amazing. I mean, I always knew she'd be an amazing dramatic actor, but I don't think I was prepared for how much she brought to this character. Well, she's mostly known for her stand-up. Yeah, and, and her... One doesn't associate her with necessarily being a dramatic actress. No, but I just, I think that we just, I mean, I think that if you're that smart and that funny and that self-aware, I think that you have it in you to be to be a great dramatic actor. So, And that, to me, I mean, her performance, I thought, even exceeded what our expectations were. So. And just um, while we're thinking about this, is any, did you have any idea of putting yourself in the film? I never did. No, I never saw myself in it. I, I didn't think I was right for any of the parts. So. 
No, that's very typical, though, if you're going to you know, write it and direct it. And a lot of people decide to put themselves, I mean, I think Don McKellar comes immediately to mind, but, mm -hmm. you, could put yourself, but you didn't see playing. I don't really have a huge desire to direct myself in films or to be in films that I'm directing. I can't imagine doing both jobs. I mean, it's so demanding and sort of physically taxing to direct a film. The idea of acting at the same time, I, I'm really amazed by people who know how to do that, but I've, it's never occurred to me. So it didn't so occur far. to you to put yourself Not in the so center role. So it's a self pen script. You wrote it yourself. I said, listen to the, the Leonard Cohen music. Um, and the, the, your previous one was based on a short story. So tell me a bit about the process um, of writing this. How long did it take? Um, where did the idea come from? Um, I started writing it when I was editing away from her. And I wrote sort of the outline of the film, and I wrote several scenes. And then I abandoned it for probably about two years. And then when I sat down to write it two years later, it happened really, really fast. I think I had a first draft in about three and a half or four weeks, and then you know did subsequent drafts. But then it, it all happened really, really fast. You had no no uh, no sort of second thoughts about doing instead of basing on someone else's material. No, I was excited to try something original. I mean, I loved working on Away from Her because it was working on a story that I loved so much by Alice Munro. Um, and in a way, it gives you a more consistent faith in what you're doing and confidence in the work when it's someone else's right. initial idea. Right, you've got a basis idea. to work from. Yeah, and and this is it's it's scarier, but it's also so thrilling to have an idea in isolation, staring at your bedroom ceiling, and then all of a sudden cut to fifty of the most talented people you know helping you make that a real physical reality that you're walking around in. It's I don't know. I think that's one of the moments where you realize. Being a director is really one of the most privileged jobs in the entire world. Like, it doesn't get better than that. It's like being a three-year-old with a lot of resources. <laughs> it's amazing. Was there any temptation to, to rewrite on set? Um, if something was, wasn't working, did you... Did absolutely, you and there was lots of improv, too. Like, there were lots of scenes where we would get to the end of the scripted stuff, and I would just keep letting the camera roll, sometimes for 15 minutes at a time. And some of my favorite moments in the, in the film weren't in the script at all. They were what happened after I should have said cut. And the actress just kept going. So there was a lot of flexibility and a lot of room, room to move. You had a great success with it, with Away From Her. Uh, perhaps maybe more than you, you know, had anticipated, especially with the Oscar nomination for your adapted screenplay. Um, and, of course, Judy Christie getting the nomination as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's, there's a high... The, the expectation, they always say the bar is high. Are you nervous about that with this film? Right after Away From Her, about eight months later... Um, after the film had come out. I had been thinking about what film I should make next, and I had different ideas of what would be expected of me after Away From Her and things that people would like to see me do. And I was thinking very strategically, and I think in all the wrong ways, uh, in all the ways people, I think, make mistake of thinking and then make really bad films because of it. And I was walking down the street, and I ran into a Toronto film critic who said, you know, what are you working on next? And I said, I don't know, I have a bunch of ideas. And he said, well, it doesn't really matter what you do next because the reviews for your next film have already been written. Disappointing sophomore <laughs> attempt from Sarah Polly, and we'll just plug the name of the film in. So just do whatever you want. And I took it literally and I thought, oh, God, that's so liberating. Like, it's true. Like, when you have, like, a successful first film, generally your second film is very badly reviewed. So, so why not do just exactly what I feel like doing? And don't worry. Like, let's just assume it's going to go badly and then do what you want, what you believe in and what, you know, what your heart is speaking to and, and then see what happens. Cause the truth is like, I didn't expect anything to come of away from her the way it did. And it was such a fun ride. It would be such a shame to have all these expectations and attachments of what was going to happen with this film and wreck the experience for myself. So I'd rather just expect the worst and, <laughs> and, and do something that I had fun doing. So actor Sarah Pauly, director Sarah Pauly, are they the same? Do you consider yourself considering an acting career? Or do you want to go into a strictly directing career? You know, I'm always more urgently pursuing writing and directing projects. So because they take so much time, like two to three years, it really makes acting get shoved to the side. But it's not because I'm not interested. And I still love acting. I'd love to do more of it. But practically, it's been hard to figure out how to, how to fit it in when I'm busy directing films all the time. Because I've been making a documentary at the same time as this film. So the last two or three years has been very very packed with shooting. So. so let's go to the obvious. Is is there another Sarah Pauly film? I mean, are you working on something? Um, I am starting to begin the process of adapting something, but I'm just at the very beginning. So So you really do want to do the next one? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Well, thank you very much thank for your time. Thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate nice it. Thank you. you.